So far, we've learned about random finite sets, the set integral, and a few common random finite set distributions, such as the Poisson and multi Bernoulli random finite sets. Our objective is, of course, to use random finite sets to perform multi-object tracking. And in order to do this, we need to express our models in terms of random finite set distributions. In the next few videos, we describe and motivate the standard models used for multi-object tracking of point objects. And the purpose with this video is merely to clarify what our objectives are and the type of models that we need in multi-object tracking. Our main objective in multi-object tracking is to compute the posterior distribution of the set of objects at time k, bold face xk, given the sequence of measurements up to and including time k, bold face z, 1 to k. This posterior captures everything that we know about the set of objects at time k. Since it's a distribution over the set of objects, it may contain uncertainties regarding both the number of present objects as well as the states of the different objects. The posterior distribution can be used for several purposes, and a common example is to estimate the set of objects. To visualize the state and measurement sequences, we consider a toy example, where both the states and the measurements are two-dimensional vectors. As I've mentioned on this slide, it is actually rather uncommon that states and measurements are two-dimensional, but we focus on such examples here since they are simple to visualize. In this example, there is one object present at time 1, and we observe one object measurement and one clutter measurement at time 1. As we proceed, we observe object measurements at most times, and also a few clutter measurements. At time 3, a second object appears. In general, the objects move, appear, and disappear with time. At time 10, two new objects appear. Of course, in reality, the objective would be to infer the set of object states from the sequence of measurements. And for a few time steps around k equal 14, we have a challenging problem since all four objects are close to each other. In this example, the objects later disappear and we are eventually left with a single object. Computing the posterior distribution over the set of objects is far from trivial, but on a conceptual level, we can perform prediction and update in the same manner for random finite sets and random vectors. That is, the prediction step is performed using the chapman kolmogorov equation, whereas the update step is performed using Bayes' rule. In the prediction step, we multiply the posterior at time k-1 with the motion model, and in the update step, we multiply the predicted density with a measurement model before we normalize the posterior distribution. In order to develop multi-object tracking algorithms using the above equations, we first need a motion and a measurement model. Since the state is now a set, the motion model does not only capture how the state vectors change, but also the probability of events where new objects appear in the area of interest, which means that new vectors are added to the set. The motion model should also describe the probability of events where objects disappear and are removed from the set. Similarly, the measurement model is a model for the set of measurements. The purpose with the next few videos is to motivate and describe these models in detail. And as you'll see, this is more or less straightforward given the convolution formula and the RFS distributions that you've already seen.